Hi everyone, happy Valentine's to everybody. We thought it would be fun to combine some basic engineering with chocolate making. Today we're looking at types of motion and some machinery and how we can make DIY chocolate. Here we see some homemade chocolate making machinery. This is the very start of the process where we need a machine to crack the shell off the cocoa beans. The shell on the outside we need to break away. So cracking is the first step in making chocolate. What we really want to get to inside is what's called a cocoa nib. What type of motions can we use? The very first is called reciprocating motion. So imagine that if I had the bean here and some sort of hammer or anvil just coming down and then back up again, that could work effectively to smash the bean. It's fairly hard to get this type of motion going backwards and forwards, at least DIY at home, right? Let's have a look at another option. Oscillating means that if I had the bean here, let's make a mount and a long lever. If I move the lever up and down, notice it's moving through a curved path. It's still going backwards and forwards like the reciprocating, but because I have a pivot here, it's going to be moving like this. Again, I have to work out a way to move this uh, up and down. So what I would probably go with as you've seen online, is a rotary type of motion. Rotary motion means just moving around and around. So if I had a drum spinning around, um, that's fairly easy to achieve because I could just hook an electric engine up to that or a belt going around it to drive it. All right, cool. So it's just a case now of if I feed the bean towards here, if I've got a little platform there, as the bean reaches here and gets pulled past there, then it's going to crack and the nibs are going to come flying out here as well as the shell. So the next step is called winnowing. We need to separate the shell and the shell is very light. So if I have some sort of a fan on there blowing, then the shell gets blown away and the nibs will fall down into a container. Let's have a go at drawing some of the mechanism that we saw online. Let's begin by holding the splat straight up and down, and we're going to draw the drum that spins around. So we'll draw a complete. Now, what I'm going to do is put my pen over this side. I'm sliding the splat until this edge lines up with there. And now I'm going to draw half an ellipse. Let me join those together. So there's our drum. The center would be about there. Now, how do we spin the drum? Well, we could draw an electric motor attached to it, but DIY, we saw an example where we had a rim, a bike rim. So if I just draw two half ellipses like that, and I'm going to do the same thing anywhere down here that you like, Let's draw the same thing again. There's one ellipse, slide, and draw another. Now, a bike rim is only thin, so I'm going to trace a line around there. There's the hub in the middle. And if you wanted to draw some spokes, these lines all point towards the center as you go around. Let's do the same thing, put a rim on there and a few spokes. Now I need a ruler, because so I'm going to connect those two together the belt disappears inside the rim there. And let's copy that angle down to there. Now you can see the belt goes around the rim, back to there and around the rim again. Cool. Now, how do we crush these beans? Well, let's start from the center. Place the splat on there. If I draw a light line out there, beans on there, they're not really going to slide along into the drum. So I'm going to need to bring that up a little bit steeper. So any angle you like, maybe not too steep, somewhere around there, let's draw that and a line across there. Let's draw the back edges. Let's copy that angle to there. So you should have something that looks roughly like that. Now, the coffee beans, are going to slide down there. And when they hit the drum, they're going to get squashed in that gap. And the nib 
is going to go flying downwards. What do you think we can put at the bottom to collect those nibs? How about we just draw a basic container? So I'm going to draw an ellipse there. Let's come down, connect those. Okay, let's put a handle on it in case we had to move it around. Good. Now the trouble is the shells that have also cracked are going to fall down here. How will we get those shells away from there, away from the nibs, so it doesn't fall into the container as well? Any ideas? Right, some of you said a fan. We could put a fan here and blow them away. But um, at home, on the video, what you saw was some PVC tubing and a vacuum cleaner. Draw a tube here. And then I'm going to draw a bit of tubing. How did I know what angle to hold that one? Well, I know at that splat angle, if I use this little ellipse and I line up those blips along there, that's how I knew what angle roughly to start it at. Uh, let's finish that with a half an ellipse. And I'm going to bend it in what's called an elbow. So I'm going to draw half and lips there, and I'm going to bend that line around. That's called an elbow, just like elbow pasta. Cool, now we need uh, a vacuum cleaner at the bottom for it to go into. Let's draw a long one here. Doesn't look much like a vacuum cleaner you'd find at home, it's more industrial. If we wanted to move it around, we might have some little wheels on it, and we might even find a handle on it to grab it and move it around. Right, so there's our vac. How about we draw an old-fashioned actual vacuum cleaner front to it like that. Okay, so there is our vacuum cleaner that is going, it's not exactly a Dyson, is it? Um, and that's going to suck. Lots of air rushes into there, and then all of the husks or shell is going to be in there. So that's called winnowing. Is there anything else that um, we can think of that might improve this? It's going to be boring standing there and filling this up all the time with cocoa beans. So what about we draw a hopper? Let's extend this out a little bit. And at the back, I'm going to draw small ellipse. So I've got those little blips going straight up and down. And then above that, in a straight line, I'm going to use this one. This is called a hopper that holds all the beans for us. So we tip all the beans in here and only some fall through. Because it's a fairly close gap, some of the beans will fall through and then no more flow. But when the beans start sliding down here, more will fall out. All right, so that's pretty cool. It's called a hopper. Let's just finish those back edges now. They disappear behind the hopper. Let's give that a little bit of thickness. Now, what if these beans didn't slide down fast enough. We could make it steeper. Or another engineering solution is to add a little electric motor here at the back. That electric motor is attached to this chute. And if I put a weight on it, that's a bit off center. So you've got something heavy out here. As this spins around, this really shakes. So as this shakes, this also shakes or vibrates, and that's going to make the beans slide down there towards the drum. One more question, how shall we power this bottom rim? When we use a belt over it, it's called a pulley. Any ideas how we can drive the pulley? Right, some people are thinking an electric motor, so we could draw an electric motor like that and hook it on, or DIY, do you remember how we drove it? If we just draw simply a line like this and then come out this way, that could be a pedal. And then let's do the same thing from behind. This is called a crank. And on that angle, we have our second pedal. So here is our person turning up for work, all ready to jump on there and pedal away. So that is the very first step in producing chocolate. Thanks for joining me today for some chocolate engineering. I'm Glennie D and I'll see you next time for some more engineering.